What is up, people? Van from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel here, bringing another build video for Celeste Crown of Magister. Today's build is going to be one of my favorites. I like to nickname it the Panzer. This is a heavy armor rogue build, which allows them to be your tank, also do some great melee DPS, and still be your rogue and do your lock picking and all of those things. So we're going to level this up to level 1 to show you what I pick when I first create this character. And then we're going to switch over to the one I've already built, show you how to level it from 2 to 12. And then at the end of the video, we'll get into some combat so you can see how it all plays out. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, first thing first, got to pick your ancestry. You can go several different ways. My favorite is the half-orc for two reasons. He is your tank. So you're going to want to have Relentless Endurance in case you do go down, you can go down to one hit point and have a chance of being brought back to life. In addition, Savage Attacks adds additional crit damage with another crit roll. Since you're going to be critting with your Sneak Attack, um, you get additional rolls on both your Sneak Attack and on your regular die. It's just a really nice additional damage that you get to add to the giant amount of damage you're going to do when you crit with your Sneak Attack. So. Next thing, we're gonna pick our rogue class. We're gonna hit next. And now we have to choose our background. Here it really doesn't matter because at level three, we're gonna gain access to medium armor. Normally I'd pick cell sword, but for this, I'm gonna go spy, mainly because of the poisoner kit and proficiency with poison kits. This allows me to add poison to my damage so I can do more damage when I'm attacking things with poisoned weapons. And that is why we went with this. But feel free to pick any background you want. It's not really that big of a deal. Now, I'm just gonna auto-optimize this. Like I said, we're gonna use a character I already have, but I do wanna show you that even though we are going, you know, tanky rogue, we still don't wanna leave out Thieves' Tools. So I'm gonna auto this, and you can see Thieves' Tools are plus five, but at level one, I get to choose an Expertise. We're gonna do Thieves' Tools. We're gonna do, uh, you know, whatever you want here, Acrobatic, Sleight of Hand, doesn't matter. And right now I'm at plus seven solely because I don't have a very high dexterity. With the build that you're going to do, you're going to want a decent dexterity because you want to keep your thieves tools high because this is still going to be your guy. So you're going to do strength, dex, and con or your three and everything else can just be whatever. All right, so now that we've gotten this far, I want to jump over to the character I already have created and kind of show you how to level him up. And so let's go there now. All right, so this is Jadik. This is the guy that I'm currently playing in one of my playthroughs. So you can see I'm running a 20 strength, a 15 dex, and an 18 constitution. Again, plus two, plus three to dex is just for your thieves tools. You can roll and get this higher if you really want to, but this is the build that I have ran with today. Now at level two for your rogue, we're gonna get cunning action. This gives you the ability to dash, disengage, and hide. The dash is what we're gonna use the most for this solely because we want to get to people as a tank, as a melee, and we want to get in their face so that we are the target and not the rest of our party. But being able to bonus action is actually very good for this build, and I'll show you that in the future here. So next we're going to level up to level three. And at level three is where we get to pick our roguish archetype. So this is what's going to make us able to be a tank rogue is this hoodlum subclass. You can see this gives me proficiency in intimidation. Okay. You gain proficiency with martial weapon, medium armor, and shields. This is what makes us a tank. And then you get this heavy beating where you can sneak attack with non-finesse melee weapons. So this is another amazing thing where I can be sword and board with a battle axe or a long sword, and I can still do sneak attack damage. That is why this build is so strong and allows us to build this tanky rogue that we're trying to achieve here. Now, we are going to level up to level 4, and we're going to take our first uh, bonus feat. So you can choose ability score or bonus feat. We're going to go bonus feat. So we were able to unlock medium armor, so that is going to make us pick Might of the Iron Legion. This gives us an additional 1 point of strength and gives us the ability to use heavy armor as well as proficiency in long swords, great swords, and battle axes. So now... We are going to be the official tank. So at level four, you can start wearing heavy armor and you don't have to worry about your dexterity. That's why I only have a plus two on my dex because once you get into medium and heavy armor, you don't have to worry about your dexterity bonus. So now I'm officially a tank. I can be using a two-handed ax or I can use a sword and board. If I were to use a sword and board, if you imagine, and I have on full plate, that's 18 AC plus shield is 20 AC. And so right now I could be running around with a 20 AC 
if I have the money to purchase those expensive armors. Okay, at level four, um, I'm sorry, at level five, we get Uncanny Dodge. Again, why this makes you such a strong uh, rogue as a tank is now once per every single turn, you can use your reaction to have an attack. So if you're gonna take a really big hit from something, you can half the damage. So it's almost like being a barbarian, but as a rogue. So this is really big on why a rogue tank is also really fun. So then we're gonna get to level six. At level six, we're gonna pick up one of our expertise again. So this allows us to double our proficiency. So as you can imagine, if you are already proficient in it, you can then double it. We've already got it in Thieves Tools, so you can do whatever acrobatics, investigation, doesn't matter, and move on, just whatever you prefer. I would just maintain the Thieves Tools and keeping increasing your Thieves Tools so that you can continue to open up chests and not have to worry about failing those, those checks. All right, then we're going to hit level 7, and this is where you gain Invasion. So now with Evasion, you already have Uncanny Dodge. Now you gain evasion where if someone throws a fireball at you and you pass, you actually can take no damage instead of half damage. So really good, you're gonna take half damage from those big AOEs, and if you pass your saving throw, you're gonna take no damage. So this just makes you more tanky and able to suck up more damage when you're in the front line. All right, now we're gonna go to level eight. So we get another feat here. So this one is gonna change kind of what you wanna do. You can do an ASI here if you really want to. Uh, if you want to stay a pure tank, you can. Uh, Armor Master is very good. It gives you one AC. But you technically can go two-hander. If you're wielding a two-hander, you could go follow-up strike, which gives you a second attack using your bonus action. I use this. I like this. Um, or you could just stay with your, you know, you can get an additional AC from wielding a two-hander. So you're already at a 20 AC with a shield. So if you switch to a two-hander, you're only gonna be at an 18 AC. And that is why you may wanna pick up one of these. So we're gonna focus on this being straight tank build, but there are options where if you don't wanna go a straight tank build, you don't have to change some of these. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ASI on this one and I'm gonna bump up my uh, my constitution to give me some more hit points. But you can choose other feats if you would like. Now we're gonna get to level nine. And this is where we get menacing. So when you hit an enemy with a sneak attack, they have disadvantage on attacks made against you to the start of your next turn. So another bonus to being a tank is whatever I hit with my sneak attack, which you're gonna be up in the front, the, good, the plan is someone's going to be up there with you most times, so you're going to get your sneak attack. And when you do sneak attack, you're going to be able to give them disadvantage on their attacks against you until the start of their next turn. So just another way to make you more tanky when you're up in the front line. All right, then we're going to get to level 10. So rogues are really cool where they get additional ASIs and bonus feats. Again, you could go... If you're going the two-hander route, you could have picked up follow-up strike before, and now you're going to pick up this forestalling strength. You can pick up armor master. You can do kind of whatever you want in this area. Rush to battle. You can do a lot of different choices. Um, I could do some ASIs and continue to bump up my decks and my con and all that. I'm just going to pick armor master because we're going to stick with the more tanky version of this of this build versus a melee with a two-hander. All right, so now we're level 11. We get reliable talent. Basically, you can anything you roll below a 10 just is is a 10, so it just makes it easier to pass all of your checks. But by level 11, the game's pretty much over at that point. And then finally at level 12, you get yet again another ability score, a bonus feat. And by this point, you probably have already beaten the game or you've gotten pretty close. So it really doesn't matter what you're going to choose. And so pick whatever you think makes sense and what you like. I don't know. I'll throw some lightning damage on my attacks. All right. So that's how we level up from 2 to 12. You can see some of the things that we got as a hoodlum rogue, plus our evasion, plus our uncanny dodge had make this pretty strong. Now let's show you how this plays out and how you strong you can actually get with some of the items in the game. And let's show you the, the gameplay and combat here next. Okay, so now we are a little gameplay. This is actually a run I've run through. So you can see I have Jadik here. He's level 11 in this fight. 
He has 102 hit points, and right now he's got a 25 armor class. So if you look, the reason he has a 25 armor class is currently I am using the Warden Blade. This is a crafted item that you can make um, fairly mid-game, I guess. It gives you one armor class and the ability to cast Spirit Guardians. So it's an additional 3d8 damage just for them being around you. And then I also have a Shield Plus 1. You can get Shield Plus 2, but right now this is 3 AC, this is 1, so I'm getting 4 AC from this. Plus, I'm wearing adamantite armor, which is an 18 AC, prevents me from getting critical damage. And so that is why I have a 25 armor class, because I also have some rings on here that give me armor class. Now, if I swapped out to a plate plus one, I'd have 26 AC, but then I'd still take crit damage where I think the adamantite is better. So there are definitely some options on rings for armor class. The warden blade is a must have, and then whatever shield you choose that has plus one, plus two, that's how you can get up to a 25, 26 armor class. Now, on the feats on this guy, I did pick the two-hander feats because I like to go two-hander, and I'll show you that here in a second. But if I were to have done a couple feats to give me more armor class, I could probably get to probably 26 or 27 here, depending on what kind of weapon, armor, etc. that I have. Now, I am also able to do a two-hander build, and you can see I still have a 21 AC while I'm using a two-hander but I am going to show you more the tanky version. And you can also see I'm wearing a Cloak of Displacement, which if I don't take damage, then they always have disadvantage against me. So if you have an armor class of 25 or 26, and you can do Uncanny Dodge, um, for the most part, with a 26 AC, most things aren't going to be able to hit you. And so you're gonna, they're going to have disadvantage at, on you for a lot of the fight. So let's show you how this works from a combat perspective. I'm actually bringing my buddy Eric with me here. Now, if you haven't seen it, I did a video on my favorite um, build for a for a ranger that I like to call the Ginsu. You can check that out. I'll put a link in here. Um, but let me show you kind of how this works. Now, I am going to, for my first round, I'm going to click on my Warden Blade, and I'm going to proceed. And now I am going to have the ability to anything that comes in is going to take damage and I'm going to end my turn. So now this guy, he's invisible. He's going to pop in here. He's going to attack me. And you can see he did a 22. So that is not going to hit because of my beautiful 25 armor class as my tank. There you go. And he took the damage from my... Um, from my spirit guardians when he entered this guy is going to try and take an attack on me as well so remember they have disadvantage and so when they come in here they're taking damage and they have disadvantage on attacks so attack of opportunity he's next to eric i'm going to get my crit on this my sneak attack and right there because of my my sword with my sneak attack i just did 40 points of damage to that guy so now it's eric's turn eric is just going to get in range so i can do sneak attacks that's all I really want for him, and I'm going to end his turn as well. Uh, I think I'm going to end his turn. How do I end his turn? There we go. Okay, now we're going to end turn on these guys because they're not part of this conversation, and we're going to go back to our good friend here. So they're trying all sorts of stuff to our rogue. Now they're like, you know what, forget this. I'm not even going to attack him. He has a 25 armor class, and they all moved on. So now it's my turn. And I can attack this guy, and I'm going to get my sneak attack. And right there, holy Moses, I just did 65 points of damage as attack because I crit with my sneak attack. And that is all she wrote on that one. So you can see that I'm still getting significant damage. They're coming into my, to my 3d8 damage from my circle. And I'm also having this... My sneak attack, I have my armor class, so as a tank, I'm just dishing out all sorts of delicious damage here. Uh, we're just going to put this on here just so I can end my turn, and then we'll show you in this next bout my two-handed attacks. Alright, so now we're going to switch to our two-hander, and you can see with our two-hander, we have lower AC, but we can still do more damage, so we're going to take one swing here. All right, so that was 37 damage with that swing. And I did pick up the feat on this guy, which is that which was that second attack after. So as a bonus action, I can attack again. I've already used my sneak attack, but we're still going to get some decent damage. 
and I was able to do 9 damage here because it's just going to be a 1d4 plus your attack, but then I'm also getting the additional damage from my axe. All right, and then I'm going to end my turn. End my turn, end my turn. And so this guy's going to do his thing. You can see they just stopped trying to attack it because I'm on a harder difficulty, and they just realize there's no way I'm going to kill this guy. And now we're going to attack. And he's dead, and we did, what, 22, 31, 32 points of damage with that attack. So you can see how strong this is. Um, it It's a great build. It allows us to be a tank. It allows us to dish out damage. And with certain items you pick up, it's just really, really strong. And that is why I like to play this Hoodlum Rogue build so much in this game. I hope you guys like this video. I hope this is a build you're willing to try out and you'll like it as much as I do. Please leave any comments if you do try it out and what you think. And check out all my other videos on Solasa Crown of the Magister and every other game that I do play. This is Van from Vanverse Gaming Channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers and peace out.